your own. And that was a fake, right? We paid $35,000 for it. And I'm trying. I know what turns me on? Hands. Really big hands. Stick with me, son. I'll make you a star. I want you guys working for me. This is a real opportunity. Jet set bartender, right? The Caribbean Jamaica man. Everybody a drink? Hey, Dad? You want to have a catch? The 1980s had it all in pop culture. Battles between the slobs and snobs, a hit movie about bartending and touching romantic realism. Writer Chris Clues says there are actually lessons here about our lives and our work. His book is Raised on the 80s, 30 plus unexpected life lessons from the movies and music that define pop culture's most excellent decade. And Chris joins us now. Chris, thanks for being with Hi, Chris. us. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Sure. I think uh, I probably every generation thinks like, oh, the you know, kids raised in the 90s, these were the best movies, maybe the 70s, 60s. Is, were there really a lot of great movies in the 80s, or are they just, uh, they, they hit close to home for some of us? Yeah, we all, I think we're all nostalgic for the, 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 our childhood or our youth. But honestly, when I look at the 80s uh, through the lens of creativity, and I say that there was like, it was like a glitter bomb somebody threw against the wall and it exploded and all these wonderful colors came out. And that was all the genres of movies and music that we had in the 1980s. You, I think some of you were talking about rom-coms earlier, which was, we had an explosion of those, of course, in the 80s as well. Let's talk about trading places. The lesson there is the difference between confidence and arrogance. Maybe you can flesh that out for us. Yeah, so Billy Ray Valentine, played by Eddie Murphy, uh, Dan Aykroyd, Jamie Lee Curtis, classic uh, 80s movie. And Billy Ray Valentine, he, we see him at the beginning of the movie, and we see he's a very smart guy. And without getting too deep into the plot, he ends up in this job as a commodities broker. He's never really done it before. And the, fir the night before his first day, he says to the butler Coleman, what if I can't do this job? What if I'm not good enough? What if I'm not what they expected? And he says, just be yourself, sir. They can't take that away from you. And if that was the only lesson we learned here, just to be yourself, that's a really important one. But he also teaches us about questioning yourself and that confident people question themselves, arrogant people question others. We think about this, we call it imposter syndrome nowadays. This idea of questioning yourself. Why did I get this job? Why do I have this position? As long as you're questioning yourself, you're going to be fine. You're going to going to get better. It's once you stop questioning yourself, you're going to look around and say, well, who do I question now? I question others. All right, let's see what the next movie is that we have queued up just so that we're all on the same page here. Uh, what's the next movie? Let's take a look. Vision Quest. <laughs> yes. Vision Quest. Loud and Swain. Uh, great underrated. I say this is one of my top five underrated movies of the 80s. And uh, there's a great lesson in here about making your mark or marking the time. And so we think about this in the context of the six minutes in a wrestling match. And his, uh, his friend Elmo does this great monologue about the six minutes in a wrestling match and this idea of marking the time or making your mark. So many of us go through life marking the time, and that's good, it's important. Mark those holidays, mark those birthdays, but mm -hmm. making your mark. And that doesn't mean that you have to be famous. It could be making your mark in your local community or with your family or in any, any way, shape, or form. And Can't Buy Me Love, uh, some people, it's kind of a, a sleeper hit. That's the one with Patrick Dempsey, right? Where he wants to date the girl that lives next door to become popular or something? I can't remember. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he, he rides a lawnmower. He cuts lawns for a living to save money for a telescope. There's a great lesson here about Patrick Dempsey going from the kind of geeky kid who, who rides the lawnmower to Dr. McDreamy, so anything is possible. <laughs> uh, but really, <laughs> as we go back to the movie and we think about it, it's the idea of don't fake it to make it because the fall can be fast and unforgiving. And that's a really important lesson in this plot about the idea of him paying for a girlfriend so he can be popular. And we see this fall that he have, has, which is really, fast and really unforgiving all right let's go to cocktail starring tom cruise cocktail uh, elizabeth shu tom cruise another classic another underrated movie from the 80s and there's this great scene where they're sitting around at a table and they're talking about all of the the pieces of uh the things around the table that are were created by people who are now millionaires so you see the the toothpicks and the toothpick wrappers and then the, the little plastic pieces on our shoelaces that she calls flugel binders and he's you know a little disappointed himself because he hasn't gotten to the point where he's going to do 
what he really loves. And she says, your Fluba binder is out there waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And it's this idea of understanding that, you know, chasing your passion and going for it. And this idea of your Fluba binder out there waiting for you. And Field of Dreams, everyone loves that one. Uh, so we should all uh, mow our backyards and build a baseball <laughs> field. Yeah, this is a great one about the difference between logical and illogical. Of course, he was illogical in the sense that he he had this crop that made money for his family and his business, and he he tears it down to build a baseball diamond because he hears a voice in the field that says, if you build it, they will come. And of course, this is illogical. He actually says to his wife, Annie, I've just created something totally illogical. But it's this idea that logical is safe and, and logical is important for us to build roads and bridges and things like that. But illogical is where creation and creativity or creativity and creation and and innovation come from. So when we create great things, we make progress in our society. It's because of people who are a little bit illogical sometimes. All right. The book is Raised on the 80s, and you can find Chris on his website and the socials. Uh, good stuff. Thanks, Chris. Thank you so much for having me. Stay rad, everybody.